Welcome. Welcome. Welcome to Vanadium. I'm Chris Rankin. The more I learn about this mad world, the more mysterious it seems. Conventional wisdom says oil and water don't mix. Stir up incompatible, unmixable substances, and most of the time, you'll end up with the same unmixed materials and a big mess. This common perception is generally correct, but not always. Two distinct, normally non-mixing substances can come together under the right circumstances. Milk is an example of this conventional wisdom being totally wrong. Two different materials, in this case, oil and water, combine into a form dissimilar to both starting materials. Materials remind me of lichens, where two different life forms, like a bacteria and a fungus, form a symbiosis to create something emergent and totally novel. Milk is an example of two distinct, very different substances intimately intermingling without any chemical reaction necessary. One material concealed or hidden within another, oil folded into water. Milk can be separated and brought back to its original parts, but not easily. These magical blends are known as colloids. They're special mixtures in which microscopically dispersed insoluble particles of one substance are suspended throughout another. In the case of milk, tiny droplets of oil are suspended in water. The oil droplets are so small that gravity can't separate them from the water. Normally, the less dense material, oil, would float to the top. Instead, in milk, the oil and water are held together by electrical charges on the surfaces of the oil droplets. They stay together, locked into one liquid. A colloid, like a solid composite, has a dispersed phase and a continuous phase. This is in contrast to a traditional solution where the solute and solvent constitute only one single phase. Solutes in solution are individual molecules or ions, while colloidal particles are bigger, full chunks of a secondary material. For example, in a solution of salt in water, the sodium chloride NaCl crystals dissolve, and the sodium and chlorine ions become surrounded by water molecules. The salt is no longer in a solid form and cannot be physically separated from the solution. In 1861, Scottish chemist Thomas Graham coined the term colloid from the Greek word kola, meaning glue. He was known for his pioneering work in dialysis, in understanding the diffusion of gases, and as one of the founders of colloid chemistry. He was one of the early pioneers of the idea that materials can come together in strange and unexpected ways. I mentioned before milk is a great example of a type of liquid-liquid colloid with globules of fat held in suspension in water. This form of colloid is also known as an emulsion. In addition to liquid-liquid colloids, two or more different solid substances can be intimately blended this way. One example is stained glass, where microscopic solid gold nuggets are dispersed in glass. If the gold nuggets are the right size, about 25 nanometers, the glass will appear red. With a slightly larger size of gold particle, the gold glass colloid can change to green. With silver nanoparticles in stained glass, one can achieve blue and yellow colors. Opals are an example of a natural solid-solid colloid, where tiny nanoscale silica spheres are dispersed in a mineral, resulting in striking colors and fascinating appearance. There are colloids of liquids and gases, like water and air or fog, gases and liquids or foams. These foams can have physical properties in between solids and liquids. Gases can also be held in solids in materials like aerogels. An ink colloid would be a solid pigment dispersed in the liquid phase. One can take very tiny solid particles and disperse them into a gas. Smoke or haze is an example of this. In this case, the force of gravity isn't strong enough to pull the particles to the ground. They instead stay suspended in the air like a gas. 
how do you know you have a colloid and not a regular solution? Turns out a beam of light can tell you. There's something called the Tyndall effect. Colloidal particles are large enough to interact with optical light. So a beam of light will form a hazy halo in a colloid. While the solution remains clear, the optical halo is from tiny reflections of light scattering off the colloidal particle surfaces. The Tyndall effect, or hazy halo, distinguishes a colloid from a solution. Milk looks white from the scattering of light rays. Sugar or salt dissolved in water appears clear. Colloids exist because of the delicate interplay of chemical forces and gravity. If the particles of the second phase are more dense or heavier than the suspending medium, they'll be driven to fall to the bottom of the container or sediment. Larger particles have a greater tendency to sink or sediment because they're more massive and show lesser Brownian motion to counteract this falling movement. If the colloid particles are less dense than the surrounding medium, the tendency will be for them to cream or rise to the top. This should be the case with milk. The oil should float to the surface. So why doesn't this happen? Why don't the materials separate? The answer is electricity. In many colloidal substances, the particles of the dispersed phase are electrically charged on the surfaces, creating mutual repulsion. In milk, the fat globules or droplets are negatively charged and tend to push away from one another. This keeps the oil broken up into tiny little spheres where it won't recombine and separate from the milk. There is another way to make a colloid. The steric stabilization method consists of absorbing a layer of a polymer or surfactant molecule on the particles to prevent them from getting close enough to be in range of attractive forces. The surfactant molecule or polymer used in this technique is made up of chains, with one end attached to the particle surface and the other extending out into the suspension medium. These surfactants act like bumpers and keep the particles from clumping or agglomerating. If you really want to destroy a colloid, and separate it back into different substances, destabilization can be accomplished a few different ways. One would be the removal of the electrostatic barrier that prevents aggregation of the particles by addition of a salt to the colloidal suspension. The electrically charged salt ions will counteract the repulsive shield on the colloid particles and allow them to clump right up. Changing the pH of the suspension can effectively neutralize the surface charge on the particles. This removes the repulsive force that keeps the particles separate. Even minor changes in pH can manifest in significant instability of the colloid. These materials are chemically very sensitive. Some have theorized colloidal particles were the basis for the early evolution of biological structures. These miniature galaxies, microscopic swirling planets, may have acted as scaffolding to build the cellular machinery. It's not surprising. Even something as simple as soap and water is a complex micellular colloid, something that shouldn't mix, but does with emergent and amazing results. Thank you very much. This was Chris Rankin with Vanadium.